he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the voice of the Lord. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together. I am Olukwono, Oluwa MC Omotola, inviting you to our 2020 family retreat coming up January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. We expect you and your family at school. Federal College of Greek, Akure. The theme and the bones came together. Feeding and accommodation are free. You can register online through our website www.christmandateministry.com. We're expecting you, you and your family. God bless you. Glorious Father, we thank you. We are saying, indeed, we are grateful for how you have been dealing with us all along. Take glory in the name of Jesus. Here we have come again today to give attention to what you have for us. May we not be destitute of your divine counsel in the name of Jesus. Open thou our ears that we may behold, that we may hear instructions from the throne of grace. Open also our eyes that we may behold wonderful things right from your presence. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. By the special grace of God, we are counting down now just a few days to January 1. Two, three, and four, when we'll be waiting for to re, I mean to receive you in um, the family retreat holding in Federal College of Agriculture in Akure here. Please don't leave your children behind. There is also space for them. There, is, there are places where they too will be attended to. God bless you in the name of Jesus. In the last episode, we started dealing with uh sex as a sacred zone and sincerely speaking we are not yet through with it uh, we are looking at it as a fire today sex is a fire you wouldn't have forgotten so quickly that we read from the chapter 31 of the book of job then when it says that it's a fire that destroys and that it will burn down to the root I would like us to read the book of um, Songs of Solomon, chapter 8. That will be our starting point today. I'm going to read a very vast passages of the Bible. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8. Let me start from verse uh, 6. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Did you listen to that? The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love, Neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it will be utterly contempt. We have a little sister and she had no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day she shall be spoken for? If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with buds of cedar. 10. I am a wall and my breasts like towers. Then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. In this text, especially verse 7, 
The Bible describes, or oh, six, six. Songs of Solomon describes sex, love as coals, coals of fire, coals of fire. I want you to take note of that language, coals of fire. So sex is actually coals of fire. It is fire. To a married couple, sex is to them what fire is to gold. But to a woman outside your matri outside relationship, marital relationship with you, and to singles who are not yet married, it is also coals of fire. But it is what fire is to stubbles, to paper, to firewood. It will leave behind it the ashes, vestige of your remains. So here, it is good if it is within marriage. And the Bible says we have a little sister. And for this our little sister, we are preparing a palace of silver. If she be found a wall. But if she's a door, well, we will not discard her. We will try to cover her with cedar boards. Who is a wall? Who is a door? A door is a passage, a go through, an in and out route through which any interested human being can just pass. Are you there? And your life has become a door. Kunle did her own. There was a misunderstanding. It was the day she laid her hand on you that you decided, his hand on you that you decided you are no longer befriending him. Now La Pasto came. And when La Pasto came, his own was just for two months. You didn't even know that he was a flat. You abandoned him. Even you, who is, who is seeing somebody as a flat, you are the mother of whoredoms, the mother of harlots, according to the book of Revelation. Thank God you saw this one who said he's a Christian. His name is uh, Oluwashim. And so you think that God has done it only for you to start relationship. You became so committed and you became sexually committed also. That was how you became a whore. Counting men now, we would have been able to count at least three. Sister, you are the door that is being referred to here. Because men had made your life a passage, a route through which they pass into and out. They go in and out of your door. The Bible says, if you are actually a door, he didn't condemn you. God promised that he is going to look for cedar boards to seal up your opening. Heaven is ready to seal up your opening. Ready, heaven is ready to make you new again. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things, he will regard them as being passed away. Behold, all things will be made new. Are you ready to be made new? Will you be ready to cut off with those nonsensical lifestyle you live? Who told you that if you do not open your tie for men, you will not be married? If a man begin to request from you sex as a condition and proof of love and as a reason, a condition for which he will marry you. Such a person will see a better person inside your matrimony. You may win the marriage, but you cannot win the man. So over the rest of your lives, you will keep striving with a flirt. But the Bible says, if she is a door, we will build upon her palace of silver. My virgin sisters, you are a door, or you are a wall. A wall is that vessel who have not yet been opened. A wall is that particular kete kete, that, that, that coat that have not been ridden upon. That is tied down at the junction of decision, waiting for the master to ride upon. You are the wall. That life that has not been yet ripped open. He has not been engaged. He has not used uh, sexual door. All those sex, uh, what do you call them? 
uh, toys. Some people, they say, I don't want a man. They use sex toys. Sometimes you use, some people use cucumber. Some people use their hands. They, they do a lot of masturbation. You are part of the wall. I mean of the door. You are no longer, you have become an emotional, eh? an emotional, not even emotional alone. You are a fornicator. I'm sorry, I don't have any milder words to use for you. Yes, you have not, men have not slept with you, but things have slept with you. You are actually if a worse fornicator than somebody who a human being has slept with. But you have used a non-human being to sleep with yourself. Now also, the Lord has included you in his plan of redemption. Only if you choose to allow him in your life today. All you just need to do is to confess that sin and make a decision to start all over with him. God has promised you, if you are a war, that he will build upon you a palace of silver. Are you a student? And they begin to tell you a lot of false sciences that if you do not sleep with a woman uh, as a man, that you will begin to have some pains. You will have prostrate whatever. Or they tell you that as a woman, ah, if you do not allow somebody to help you open it, that your firstborn will have problems. I don't know where those demonic ideas came into the hands of those illiterates, educated illiterates. I don't know how they are able to convince you. But please be informed it's all lies. Don't let Ajegbo the one when he could run it. Ti won ti baje. Won wan wen ni ti ti won ti 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 e tu bo ma baje. So that one lake was anyway. Can I plead with you? Please don't, don't, don't join their bandwagons. The Lord has distinguished you and had focused on you for a unique destiny accomplishment. May your own destiny not be squandered in Jesus' name. I said it is a fire. I'm going to read from chapter 6 of the book of Proverbs again. This fire, I said it is to marriage what fire is to gold. It purifies it. But it is to a single what fire is, to firewood, to grasses, to stubbles, to clods. Can you read? Let me read for you verse 25. He says, Lost not after her beauty in your heart, neither take, let her take you with her eyelids. Let me read verse 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? The moment you begin to imagine, you begin to consider, you begin to uh, uh, have the lust of a particular female, of a particular male in your heart as an opposite sex. The Bible is saying you are already taking fire in your bosom and it will burn your garment of righteousness. It will burn your clothes of glory. It will burn your clothes. Can one go on hot coals? And his feet not be burned. Can you see that? The same hot coals used here is the same hot coals used there. Yes, it is hot coals in marriage. Yet it remains a hot coals in the life of a single. It can destroy destiny. It can burn your feet. That organ of locomotion. That thing you use to advance in life. That thing you use to progress in your journey of destiny. It will become burnt. So you will have nothing to work with, to advance life with. Even if you are working, your movement will be impaired like that of Jacob. He had to use stick to begin to support himself because his destiny had been dislocated through to, due to stubbornness. Let me read for you. I'm going to read a whole chapter for you uh, this morning or this moment. Chapter 5. My son, attend to my wisdom. And bow thy ear to my understanding, that thou mayest dis uh, regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. 
but her end is bitter as warm wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear now, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Have you listened? The Bible says, it may be sweet, but the end is usually bitter. All those caressing hands, they are destructing hands. All those fingers that is touching your neck, touching your chest, touching your every part of your body. They are simply scanning your destiny for destruction and emptiness. The Bible says, yes, you will think you enjoy it. But hear that your destiny shall be destroyed. Listen to what it will do to you if you don't remove your way far from her. Verse 9. Lest thou give thy honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. <laughs> your honor will depart. What if he honor or go here or la here? What if he shola? By the time you are rising up, you are rising up empty. It says that same verse, and your years unto the cruel, you will begin a cruel torment in the night, in the daytime. And my, one of my brothers was sharing with me that a lady told her that a medical doctor slept with her. She roped, she ripped that medical doctor of glory. Of honor. Her carcass left. Over time, just a short while after, he lost job. She said another one slept with her. That one ended in prison. Have you realized that since you began this business, your life has become empty? Your financial life is no longer the same. Who told you that? Hey, there is nothing to eat, Joe. Till Uba manifests by own Paisa Beni. The time it will manifest, it will be irreversible. Verse 10 says, Let strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Your labor, your wealth, your salary, your resources, will go through demonic conduits. Uba, pipeline, Abe, is in the house of the, is in the treasury of the dark. Treasury of darkness. Do you know the treasury of darkness is loaded with hijacked destinies and glory and wealth? Timothy Balara, politicians, medical personnel, great people who have been great men. They are storing them there. The more you do it, the emptier your life becomes. Every ejaculation, you are ejaculating loads of wealth and of glory. You don't know. People use it for money now. They use it for money ritual. You think it is ordinary. Keep wasting it. And by the time you are empty, let me read more for you. What will happen to you at last? And thou, verse 11, and thou mourn at last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teacher nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Listen to this instruction today. To you married people, listen. No? Verse 15. Drink water as out of your own cistern and running water as out of your own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Living Bible says, don't let your streams become public. Where anyone can just take some, some drinks. Some careless women out there, they taste you. Let them only, let them be only thy own, your wife alone, and not strangers with thee. Other women, other men are strangers. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of, your, of thy youth. Don't rejoice with strange women. Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished. 
lost after your own wife, always with her love. And why would thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the way of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holding with the cause of sins. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. You will die without instruction. You will just die in foolishness. Why must you? Heaven is crying unto you, begging you, beckoning unto you, pleading with you today that you need to move your way far from her. Break that relationship. If possible, move away from that town, from that community. Change your accommodation. Change your church. Change your environment. Because you need somebody to help you. You need Jesus to really help you. As long as you even change your church. That is what some prophets and ministers are. They are lives. Their lives are ruining the singles' lives the more. Rather than, being, that, rather than being deceived and deceiving others. Why don't you help your life and run from such an environment and report the case to men of God who can help your destiny and pray for you? We concluded last week that it is not ordinary. Let me read for you again chapter 6 of this book, this holy book, The Voice of God. The man who will judge you is the same person telling you now. Verse 20, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon, the height, upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. 24. To keep thee from the evil woman and women. To keep you from that evil man. That terrible boy. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. In those days, it was the flattery of the old woman. Of the, of the strange women. But today, it is the flattery of men. By the time they begin to tell you, wow, you are beautiful. You are the best thing that has ever happened in the planet Earth. I am very sure... You must have been a deliberate creature. I don't know. It was a blessed thing that my path crossed yours. Wonderful meeting you. Each time I behold your galloping locomotion like that of a gazer, your steppings like that of a monster. In fact, I don't know. You are this, you are that, you are that. And then your head begins to swell. Hey, And you too, you think you are like that. Even if you are the ugliest creature in the universe. Because he wants to use you. That is the language you will hear from men. Listen, you man. Verse 25 says, Lost not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Hmm? In this place, the Bible is telling us three things you must beware of in women. Number one, the flattery of the tongue. It take money. Number two, beauty. Even those that have no beauties today, they use artificial one. By the time they put, uh, what do you call it? Is it Mary Kay? No. They will first of all put foundation. Then they will putty, And then they will now paint. Eh? Or what do you call the first paint they put on the car? Then they will now put the second foundation. Okay? They will now put the other one. They will shape the one God has created. And then they will now put artificial. Then by the time you look at this person, it's not the same man, it's not the same woman you used to know. Don't lost after those beauties. They are not, it's not their true beauty. It's not their real, their real color. It's not their true self. Those, are, those things you are looking at, they are simply clay, clay and paints that you are lost in after. Clay and paints. Order. Atefu. Ati. Ati clay. That's what you are dying and paying for. What a daft you are. Let me read further. It says, 
I say three things. Beauty. The number three, uh, the number three one, eyelids. 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 By the time they begin to wing the thing and roll it and roll it, before you know it, you become melted. Verse 26 now says, look at what they will do to your life. By means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. It should be crumbs of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Why your life has become a hunting, a game, in the hands of men and women is because there are precious things that one can suck. Precious destiny, glory in you that people can actually siphon and then they leave you empty. I have read verses 27 and 28. Look at verse 29. It says, Can one go on hot coals? 20, 28. And is fit not be bond? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife. Can you see yourself? You think you are enjoying. Madame ye wa gone, Madame ye le. A ye lutin jo mu ye. He says, Whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. You still have the effrontery to climb the pulpit, to read the Bible and preach. Whereas you are not innocent. Why don't you confess your sin? And come back to the Lord today. You are you still sing. My lifetime, you will give God your lifetime. You are a choir. You still sing. You still have the effrontery to prove you are a Christian. The Bible says you should not do that. Listen to verse 32. But let me shout with all my mouth. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Can you be wiser than God? A wound and a dishonor shall he get. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. Lai lai egoi ani mukuro. The destruction, the judgment will not even regard ransom. Verse 35. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. I'm not even talking about the sickness that will come with it. I am not so talking about the evil that will come with it. But hear the sound of wisdom this morning. Hear the words of God. Hear the divine counsel. And do not allow your destiny to be ruined. Chapter 7, Proverbs. There are a lot of things. When you are falling into it, when you see men beginning to show aggression to their wives, it is just because they have been trapped in this pit outside. The Bible says they lack understanding, chapter 6, verse 32. Verse, chapter 7, verse uh, 26 says that he has, she has casted down many. Many strong men have been slain by her. I don't know how to talk now. Campus girls, brothers, sisters, our honorables, our uh, great men of God. Don't forget, the precious thing in your life is what the devil is looking for. Those men around your life, those women around your life flattering you, they are there to harvest your glory. Why don't you stand up in fury against this destroyer of destiny? Proverbs says so that it's a destroyer of destiny, that you should not give your strength to that which, to that which destroy kings, that which siphon destiny. That is chapter 31, I think, or chapter 30. Hmm? Today, I want you to confess your sin and tell it to God. Tell him, Lord, I am sorry. Tell him, God, I release my life unto you. I stop this thing forthwith. I will no longer do it. Chapter 31, verse 3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroy kings. Women, give not thy glory to men and to that which ruin glory. Close your eyes and let us pray. Father, thank you for those 
destinies, those souls, those lives that are ready to be delivered today. And I'm pleading that you should please, Father, take their confession of sins for, for real and deliver them from the destruction of strange men and strange women. Some of them truly acknowledge that they have been emptied. Some of them have declared that their destiny has been ruined. They cannot even help themselves, but Lord, help them today. And let, their, let there be recovery for their destinies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the voice of the Lord. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together. I am Olupono, Oluwa MC Omotola, inviting you to our 2020 family retreat coming up January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. We expect you and your family at school. Federal College of Agric, Akure. The theme and the bones came together. Feeding and accommodation are free. You can register online through our website www.christmandateministry.com. We're expecting you, you and your family. God bless you.